Good to be able to join you at Amund Vale for this final video of 2022. And as I thought about the ending of this year and the beginning of next year, and as I wondered what would be an appropriate section to read, and as I considered what would be a, a suitable subject to, to study, well, I was drawn to the 103rd Psalm, Psalm 100. And three. Let's begin by reading the 22 verses. Psalm 103, a psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts, and to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children, to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Can I share with you a, a curiosity about this psalm? Those who have investigated would tell us that in this psalm there are found the middle verses of the whole Bible. 31,102 verses in the Bible and the middle verses are verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 103. And at the centre of the words found in these two verses are the last four words of verse 1, bless his holy name. And so the central message of the Bible found in the very centre of the Bible is this, bless his holy name. You remember the question of the catechism, what is the chief end of man? And its answer, man's chief end is to glorify God and to, to enjoy him forever. In other words, in four words, in our words, bless his holy name. A curiosity about the psalm. And then note the construction of the psalm. There's a lovely symmetry. The psalm commences as it concludes. Bless the Lord, O my soul. A lovely symmetry and a growing melody. David begins by addressing his soul. He uses the words, my, thy. Then he includes others, we, us, our. And then he instructs many more. The circle widens and widens. And so the curiosity about the psalm, the construction of the psalm, and now the contents in the psalm. Campbell Morgan includes this psalm in his most interesting book on the great chapters of the Bible. He says this, this psalm is a pure song of worship. There is not a single petition in it from first to last. In it, David gave no expression of any desire 
but from beginning to end poured out his soul in praise and thanksgiving. John Phillips calls this psalm David's Hallelujah Chorus. Charles Spurgeon wrote, There is too much in the psalm for a thousand pens to write. It is one of those all-compelling scriptures, which is a Bible in itself. It might alone almost suffice for the hymn book of the church. Look at the psalm and you will see that there is a, a five-fold instruction. Verse 1, the psalmist instructs his soul to bless the Lord. Again, verse 1, the psalmist instructs his whole being, all that is within me, to bless the Lord. Come down to verse 20, the instruction then goes to his angels, the angels of the Lord. Verse 21, the, the instruction goes further, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his. And then in verse 22, the instruction goes to all his works in all places of his dominion. In other words, the instruction extends to the whole of creation. This is somewhat similar to what we have in Revelation 5. In that chapter, the choir gets larger and larger and the chorus in that chapter gets louder and louder. And so do you see a fivefold instruction. And then there is a fivefold description, a fivefold description of the believer's benefits. Says the old hymn, when upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. And that's what David does here. He counts his blessing says Spurgeon to quote Spurgeon again he he selects a few of the choicest perils from the casket of divine love threads them on the string of memory and hangs them about, about the neck of gratitude look at verses three and four and five five times over we read the word who who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things? That's the testimony of David. That's the testimony of every believer. And that's my testimony. That's your testimony. I have been forgiven. I have been healed. I have been redeemed. I have been crowned. I am satisfied. I have been forgiven. I, I stood in the dock, the divine courtroom, the divine dock. There I was charged, there I was convicted, there I was condemned, but I have now been cleared, cleared of all mine, all thine iniquities, says the psalmist. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from from what? Says John the Apostle, from all sin. My sin. Oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Or in the words of the psalmist, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And then I was in the hospital, suffering from diseases of the soul, but now I have been cured there's not a friend like the lowly jesus no not one no not one none else could heal all our souls diseases no not one no not one and then i was in the slave market owing a debt i could not pay but that debt was cancelled sunken ruin sin and misery bound by satan's captive chain Guided by his artful treachery, hurrying on to endless pain, my Redeemer plucked me as a brand from hell. And so like Job and Job 19, and like David in Psalm 19, and, and like the, the writer of that hymn, we can save the Lord, my Redeemer. And then I was a pauper, but now I have been crowned. Psalm 65 says, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. 
But here in Psalm 103, it's not the year that is crowned, it's the believer. 2023, 2023 is to be coronation year. But in 2022, every believer has already been crowned. In the words of 1 Samuel 2, I have been set among princes. Think of the splendour of the crown that will be placed next year upon the head of King Charles. Think of the value, the crown jewels, but think of the greater value of this crown, crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. And then I have been invited to the king's table and now I am contented. Satisfieth thy mouth with good things. Way back in the beginning, man was made a living soul. Because of sin, man was made, man became a longing soul. Desires that he could not satisfy. But Psalm 107, he, the Lord, satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. He is not a disappointment for he satisfies indeed. And so I have been cleared and I have been cured and my debt has been cancelled and I have been crowned and I am now contented. And as I think of what and where and how I once was and as I think of what and where and how I now am, I must bless the Lord. The fivefold description. And then there is a fivefold illustration. Five images are used to make five points. And in each case, we find the word as or the word like. Those words are used. The first image is taken from the realm of zoology. Verse five. Thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Mr. Darby must have had this text in mind when he wrote. Though thy way be long and dreary, ego strength he'll still renew, garments fresh and foot and weary. Tell how God hath brought thee through. And then there's the words of Isaiah 40. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Says Spurgeon, the eagle is the strongest of the feathered race, the most fearless, the most majestic, the most soaring. In the previous psalm, Psalm 102, there's the loneliness of the sparrow. I am as a sparrow alone upon the house top. But now we have the loftiness of the eagle. Renewed. Thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And then the second image is taken from the realm of astronomy. Verse 11. As the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. How high is the heaven above the earth? Well, what would David's answer have been then? What would the, the scientist's answer be now? Well, that is the height of God's mercy. And then the third image is taken from the realm of geography. Verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Our transgressions, can you number them? An incalculable number. An incalculable number. Removed an immeasurable distance. An immeasurable distance. You see, had the psalmist said, as far as the north is from the south, well, that would have been good, but that would still have been a determined distance. You can measure from the North Pole to the South Pole, but from the east to the west is immeasurable. Travel east and you'll never get to the, to the, to the west. Travel, travel west and you'll never get to the east. And so an immeasurable distance. There is no fixed east point. There is no fixed west point. You'll, you'll see that in these two verses, the psalmist has drawn two lines. One is vertical, from heaven to earth. One is horizontal, going eastwards, westwards. The lines intersect, and what do they form? They form a cross, and it's on the basis of the cross. 
that God can provide mercy. It's on the basis of the cross that God can remove transgressions. This has been called the geometry of God's grace. The fourth image is taken from the realm of the family. Verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. The pity of a father for a son. There are biblical examples of that. Think of the father and the son in Luke 9. Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. Think of the father and the son in, in, in John 4. The, the father besought him, besought the Lord Jesus, that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Think of the father and the son in Luke 15. When the prodigal was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Biblical examples of the pity of a father for his son. So the Lord pities them that fear him. He is our heavenly father. And then the fifth image is taken from the realm of botany, verse 15. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, the place thereof shall know it no more. As grass, as a flower of the field. Man and his beauty, yes, men flourish like a flower. But then man and his brevity, we come and then we go. We are here and then we are gone. And so in the psalm, this fivefold instruction, in the psalm, this fivefold description, in the psalm, this fivefold illustration, and then finally, there is in the psalm a fivefold exposition, a fivefold exposition of the character of God. Verse 6 The Lord and his equity. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So much of this world might seem unfair, said the poet, truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. But in God's good time, rest assured, all that is wrong, all that is wrong, will be put right. In, in verse 7, a reference to Moses, a reference to the children of Israel. Remember the oppression of the children of Israel. But remember the divine intervention, Exodus 3, the, 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 the burning bush, the words of the Lord. I have surely seen the, afflic the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. I know their sorrows and am come down to deliver them. And in that chapter, a reference to those who had endured oppression. Long may they have waited. Long may they have suffered. But God was not indifferent and God was not impotent. God came to their rescue. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. The Lord and his equity and then in verse 8 the Lord and his mercy his mercy withholding from us what we do deserve his grace he is merciful and gracious the Lord giving to us what we don't deserve he hath not dealt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities the Lord and his equity the Lord and his mercy and then in verse 14 the Lord and his memory you know, we can forget God. The psalmist himself appreciated that. Verse 2, forget not all his benefits, but God will not forget us. He remembereth that we are dust. He knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. There are two words of light divine that fall upon this heart of mine, that thrill me in the hour of gain, that still me in the hour of pain. Two words with wondrous power, sufficient unto any hour, he knows. He knoweth our frame. He remembereth 
that we are dust. The Lord in his memory. And then in verse 17, the Lord in his eternity. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. He is from everlasting to everlasting. There is a contrast between the life of man and the loving kindness of God. And yet that loving kindness of God extends, it prolongs the blessings of his people. There's a reference to children's children. And so blessings are extended in time. But more, we become the recipients of his mercy forever. The Lord in his eternity. And then, verse 19, the Lord in his sovereignty. The Lord hath prepared, says my margin. The Lord hath established his throne in the heavens. His kingdom ruleth over all. Over all countries. Over all continents. Over all centuries, over all creation, over the whole cosmos. You know, political leaders may think that they have the power, they have the authority, they have the numbers, they have the votes to do as they please in the face of God's explicit commands. But God rules over all. You know, in Revelation 4, John is taken, he's transported, he's removed, he's raptured to heaven. And he sees a throne set in heaven. And that throne is filled. The Lord hath established his throne in the heavens. His kingdom ruleth over all. You know, some take the doctrine of God's sovereignty and they would argue about it. That's the wrong approach. Rather, rather, rather appreciate the truth. Of the sovereignty of God. God rules. He is in absolute control. It's been well said. There is not a single random molecule. In the entire universe. And that means this. That nothing at all. Nothing at all can happen. Except by his permission. Or by his direction. There may be first ministers. There may be monarchs. And in this year we've had two. There may be prime ministers, and in this year we have had three, but God is the only potentate. I've, I've said already that the psalm concludes as it commences, bless the Lord, O my soul. And so at the end of the psalm, we are in effect taken back to the beginning. And maybe the psalmist wanted the psalm to be sung, and then sung again, and then sung again. In other words, what he's saying is this, the sentiments of the psalm should be our constant refrain. Just in closing, let me say this, 2022 will, of course, go down in history as the year of the death of the Queen. Will we ever forget where we were when we learned that she was gravely ill? And then... Will we ever forget where we were when we learned that, very sadly, her life had come to an end? Did you know that the Queen's favourite hymn was a hymn that is a, a paraphrase of this psalm? Written by a man who was born in Scotland, educated in Ireland, ministered in England and ultimately died in France. Henry Francis Light. Let me read his hymn to you as I close. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like thee his praise shall sing. Praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favour to our fathers in distress. Praise him still the same. As ever, slow to chide and swift to bless. Praise him, praise him. Glorious in his faithfulness. Father, like he tends and spares us. Well, our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us. Rescues us from all our foes. Praise him, praise him. Widely as his mercy flows. Frail. As summer flower we flourish. Blows the wind and it is gone, but while mortals 
rise and perish. God endures unchanging on. Praise him, praise him. Praise the high eternal one. Angels in the height adore him. Ye behold him face to face. Saints triumphant bow before him. Gathered in from every race. Praise him, praise him. Praise with us the God of grace. And so as one year comes to a conclusion, as another year is about to commence, may God richly bless you.